So I haven't done one of these in a while, um, probably like almost a year. I would do these kind of regular, um, I called them morning warm up talks and I would just record a video. It would take like maybe under an hour end to end to cut it and put it online. Um, but I have since gotten lights and a green screen and a lavalier and I was doing them before just sitting in a chair by the window while I drink my coffee. Ostensibly spill it. And um, <clears throat> so now it sort of feels a little weird to do these because I've got like all the gear and like the other one is kind of just like impromptu, just kind of did it. And uh, so I'm going to try to just sort of see how this feels. Um, I am finding that with the sort of balkanization of social media, like, I mean, really feeling the pinch of just like, you know, having an order of magnitude less reach, you know, the people on Twitter that used to sort of like forward my stuff on are all gone. Um, and like, you know, Twitter itself is just, you know, it just bleeds value by the day. Um, you know, I, I started, I guess Blue Sky showed up probably after the Summer of Protocols thing started. So I have not really had time to sort of build up a, a, a just really use that or anything. Mastodon, similar deal. Like, it's just, this doesn't have the same punch. Uh, and, uh, you know, then there's like Warpcast, Farcast. I don't know what the hell they call it. It's one of those two. Um, I just, I don't have time like for that. And it's like on a little app, it's on my Mac. The Mac is old, you know, it doesn't get the same, uh, you know, use me flipping back and forth to it. Um, <clears throat> right now I'm spending most of my time in the summer of protocols discord. And like every once in a while I'm streaming and, um, so I think, and then of course, like I've got the newsletters, um, I have, I put out a new, like, like a weeks ago now, I put out a new Nature of Software uh, chapter seven. Um, what was it? It was Local Symmetries. Next week, I'm going to be writing chapter eight, which is Deep Interlock. Um, so look out for that. Um, what else did I do? I did the talk at the IA conference was finally released. This is like a bunch of stuff. I think I'm going to actually end up blasting out like a main newsletter because I've, you know, been, I mean, I've really just been like writing code uh, most of the time. This, uh, well, not just code. Sorry, I've actually been writing, writing a lot. Like what I've found with the Summer Protocols project is it is, it's really not a big thing and getting the conceptual entities right has been a big like the biggest part of the job and just getting like just trying to figure out what the hell to even just write down has been a challenge and <clears throat> You know, I think I, I have it at this point, and like now that I have it, I can just sort of sit down and bulldoze through um, the code. And I'm going to try to do that this weekend because, again, I leave for. Um, I'm going to have to have the uh, the retreat, so I want to get a uh, what's it called? I want to get a uh, a prototype complete by the time I show up at the uh, at the retreat in Seattle. That's kind of the job. I I think it's possible. Like again, like. I've written so much, like, so much scratch, like, I've written so much, like, um, precursor material, and, like, a lot of it is really just, like, moving stuff around at this point, and then when you move it around, you've got to decide what you want to call it, um, you know, and, like, what, just think about, like, what the characteristics of the, you know, the thing even is, um, and uh, so I think I've, I'm sort of satisfied with, with that. And I'm, what I'm less satisfied with is like the third party modules and stuff that I'm like, 
do I write an HTTP message library? Eh, like I'd prefer not to. But the ones that are on offer for Ruby, like they all have baggage. Like they all in, in assume like if it's either Rack or if it's like like it's a HTTP client library or something like that. Like it, they all have this. Yeah, they all like do too much or too little in the wrong places and it's just, I mean, it's really quite frustrating. One of the things that I have noticed just like what is sort of coming very apparent to me is like just how much confluence there is on this project. Like I started thinking about, like I started thinking about like a web substrate in 2006. And what I meant by that was, like, I imagine that there's, like, all these sort of sundry operations on the web that, like, don't have anything to do with any particular content. Like, they just, they're filters. They, you know, they're, you know, they are, um, they're little things that twiddle things. And I get that from, like, all the way back in my first like tech job in 1999 and 2000 when I was like a little baby sysadmin. Basically, I was tech support and then I got promoted to sysadmin because they needed somebody to do the night shift. And um, I got fooling around with uh, Mod Perl, which is like the Perl uh, interpreter like bolted to Apache. And what that enabled me to do was do Apache modules without having to write C. Um, because that's very slow and annoying versus uh, Mod Perl, you can write stuff very quickly. Like the germ it planted into my head was you can make like a little things, little bits of code that twiddle a request or they twiddle the response and they just kind of like modify stuff. And so this idea for a substrate um, where your the stuff that actually is the application generates the content is like very small and very simple. And then you can just transform it successively after that. So that's sort of like an idea that, you know, I didn't even, that's not original to me. There's a thing called Cocoon that, that did this back in like 2001. I never used it because it was Java and I didn't want to like set up all that infrastructure in order to, I mean, plus Java is an awful language, but, um, so then like, you know, in a couple of years, like 2006, seven, eight, I realized that I could um, transform HTML into itself. So, you know, I would just have con like the content handlers would produce content. I would then transform it or compose it or whatever. Uh, and that's like a technique I've been using on my like own personal website. I think I had the epiphany in 2006, 2007 and, and then, uh, you know, I didn't get around to like making a website for myself until 2008. Um, but I've been using this kind of like transclusion, like this sort of, uh, you put the bare bones content in the, you know, in the file, whatever, and then you transform it, you compose it at the network level. So that's like a technique I've been using for 15 entire years. And I mean, going back even farther, like, you know, I've been doing transformations and stuff on, you know, on content for, you know, that was my main job in like 2002 through five. So, um, you know, this is all sort of coming together. And, and similarly, um, the sort of idea of using UUIDs uh, as durable identifiers and then overlaying human readable ID uh, URLs and then having something to manage that, that was an idea that I had like a super long time ago as well. Um, the RDF stuff, so um, two things happened. In 2009, RDFA was invented, and in 2011, JSON-LD was invented. And those, I think, were like the missing pieces. Uh, RDFA, you embed semantic metadata into HTML or SVG or any markup language you want. Um, JSON-LD is like amazingly clever. Um, it has this sort of notion of a context and and what you can do is you can shove, you put like, you know, your, it's basically linked data. It is uh, semantic web data structures. But then you can, 
you give it a context and what that can do is bleach out all of the semantic stuff and you're left with vanilla JSON. And that's important because you can smuggle the vanilla JSON, uh, you know, because the thing that there's a sort of phobia or something like that about using RDF in like mainstream web development, there's like a antipathy toward it that, I mean, I, I don't understand, but I do understand, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, the, the sort of basic you know, idea or whatever on the beef is, you know, it's like, why do we have to do all this complicated stuff? Why can't we just do this? And well, the answer is like, you do the complicated stuff because it's actually simpler. Um, but um, anyway, like you can, with JSON LD, you can like make uh, what by all accounts is vanilla JSON. People can interact with it. Like, you know, the whatever, uh, you know, people who think they're smart web developers can can use the vanilla stuff but then you can just you know if you want the actual semantic stuff back you apply the context to it and it resolves it back to actual uh, rdf data so that's something that didn't exist when i was sort of in back in 2006 thinking about the substrate thing so you know other ideas in there like the website is its own api like why would you have a separate site for an API when you could have like polymorphic resources uh, that could present in either HTML or JSON LD. Um, you know, why would you make two separate things? But anyway, I mean, I can talk about the tech of this for freaking ages, um, it's, but uh, now I'm going to finish my coffee.